Hello everybody, Dr. Ryan here, a board certified specialist physician. Thank you so much for joining us. Even as we look at a head-to-toe clinical approach to the diagnosis of systemic lupus erythematosus, the booth. Oh! If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Okay, guys. So as customary the case, you can uh, step back and just take a look at the appearance of the patient, introduce yourself, position the patient, obtain adequate exposure. They just step back and look at the overall appearance. Does the patient look cushing -oid? The most common cause for Cushing syndrome is exogenous administration of corticosteroids, and corticosteroids is our management of lupus, okay? Does the patient look uremic? That could be due to lupus nephritis. Right, pick up the hands and look for any typical deformities, something called Jacquard's arthropathy, which looks like and smells like rheumatoid arthritis, but it is non-deformative by definition. Right? Look for Reynolds phenomenon, which is the triphasic color change in the hands. Look for nail fold, vasculitic infarcts on the base of the nails, periangle erythema, telangi ectasi, dilated capillaries, stereodactyly, which speaks to tapering of the fingers, calcinosis, which may manifest as nodules at the joints, the interphalangeal joints, puffy digits, and Gottschall's papillos. Remember that systemic lupus erythematosus may have an overlap with other rheumatological and connective tissue issues. Right, like with systemic sclerosis or like rheumatoid arthritis. When lupus overlaps with rheumatoid arthritis, we call that rupus. Okay, and you feel the pulse, do an Allen's test, uh, check for hypertension and for fever as well. Always test for proximal weakness, right, which could be due to the disease process itself, due to concomitant myositis, and due to steroid use. Also, test for muscle tenderness, right. Be on the lookout for palpable purpura, for vitiligo, because we know that lupus, because it's an autoimmune condition, it keeps company with other autoimmune conditions like vitiligo and lymphadenopathy. Right? Look at the face. Does it look mouse-like with microstomia? So usually you should be able to fit three fingers between the upper and lower teeth with the mouth fully open. This is severely reduced in a patient with microstomia. Right? Look for moon faces, which speaks to Cushing syndrome, the heliotrope rash, uh, which speaks to dermatomyositis, and the butterfly rash, which is typically a male rash which spares the nasal labial folds. It's typical of systemic lupus erythematosus. Right? Then you want to check for scalp tenderness and temporal tenderness, alopecia, right? especially non-scarring alopecia, right? and lupus hairs. Looking at the eyes, you have xeropthalmia, which basically is dry eyes, do a Schirmer's test with this concomitant Sjogren's syndrome, scleritis, epistleritis, neuritis. Now, the difference between scleritis and epistleritis is that epistleritis, when you ask the patient to close the eyes and open it, will blanch. The redness will blanch, but scleritis does not. Right? Look for a, a cataract as well. Look into the fundi, you're looking for infarcts for cytoid bodies, pigmentary retinopathy. That could be on the back of chloroquine use. And chloroquine, as we know, is one of the uh, immunosuppressive agents used in lupus. So, looking at the mouth, we already spoke about microstomia, which is the diminished aperture, less than 3 centimeters by definition. Look at aptus ulcers, especially on the heart palate, xerostomia. In the chest, you want to listen for a wheeze. So, a wheeze could happen in the setting of polydiastrodosa. So, we know that the nomenclature has changed. We no longer call it polydiastrodosa. We call it uh, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, right? And they find crepes, listen for a plural rub, because serocytis is also one of the features of lupus. Listen for or, or percuss out basal dullness, which could be due to an effusion or restricted lung disease. In the heart, you want to listen for a murmur and a pericardial rub. The pericardial rub, like, like leathery surfaces rubbing against one another. In the abdomen, you'd be on the lookout for the spinomegaly, if you patch a megaly, if any bruise. In the leg, we spoke about proximal muscle weakness, liver door reticularis, which is a net like meshwork or framework that we see. It's a typical rash. Once you see it, you'll never forget it, right? Petechi or purpura on the basis of thrombocytopenia, ulcers, especially in the lateral tibia, ankle and sacral edema on the back of lupus nephritis and neuropathy. Also check for your pulses. Urinalysis as well, check for any proteinuria, any hematuria or hemoproteinuria and quantify that with the formal urine protein creatinine ratio and look for casts, red cell casts as well. And the highest centers, watch out for dementia, psychosis, and any post ictal phenomenology. So this is the typical rash of acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, right? The butterfly rash, which occurs over the malar area and typically spares the nasal labial force, right? And here we can see also a similar uh, rash in the ear. All right, here what we can appreciate is this is a very globular heart on the chest x-ray which speaks to a pericardial effusion that's part of serocytosis, right? 
Um, uh, here we can see typical electrical alternance. Look at the amplitude of these QRS complexes. It's small, large, small, large, small, large, alternating. That is what we call electrical alternance, which fits with constrictor pericardial or rather pericardial effusion. Okay. And here we can see uh, vasculitic lesions on um, uh, the palms. Right here we have non scarring alopecia. Right here as well, this is what we call Gottschalk's papule. Now, Gottschalk's papule happens to the knuckles, right? And it's typical in dermatomyositis. Sometimes you have an overlap syndrome with lupus and dermatomyositis. Okay, here we can see uh, uh, typical mouth ulcers and vasculitic lesions and the hard palate. This is Levodoreticularis. We spoke about this. We said it's a, a network or a mesh like uh, framework that you see here in the skin. Guys, this is the 2019 ACR EULA, which is American College of Rheumatology and European League Against Rheumatism. Classification criteria for systemic lupus erythematosus. So the entity criterion is you've got to have an antinuclear antibody at a titer of 1 is to 80 minimum, all right, in order to enter into the diagnostic criteria, right? Then the criteria are divided into whether we're dealing with a clinical domain or an immunological domain, right? So a competent score of at least 10 clinches the diagnosis of lupus. Right, in terms of the clinical domains, there's a whole lot constitutional in the way of fever. It scores you two points. Uh, hematologically speaking, you have uh, pancytopenia, or you can have leukopenia with lymphopenia, thrombocytopenia, and autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Right, those score you three, four, and four respectively. Neuropsychiatric domain, if the patient's delirious, to score two. Psychosis scores you three. Seizures scores you five. From a mucocutaneous standpoint, non scanning alopecia will score you two. Auto ulcers two, subcutaneous or discoid lupus scores you four. Acute cutaneous lupus, where we have the, the malar rash that we spoke about, uh, will score you six. Uh, cirrhosal, if there's plural or pericardial effusion, scores you five. Acute pericarditis scores you six. Musculoskeletal joint involvement scores you six. Renal, if there's proteinuria, which is over 0.5 gram for 24 hours, uh, urine PCR will manifest with a value of above 0.05. If you've got on renal biopsy, a lupus ophitis class 2 and 5, that scores you 8 points, or class 3 and 4 scores you 10 points. Then you look at the serology, okay? So we said that you have to have an antinuclear factor at a minimum title of 1 is to 80, right? An additional supportive evidence in the way of antiphospholipid antibodies, and then we have anticholinergic antibodies, or anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibody, or lupus anticoagulant will score you 2. Look at your complement value, C3, C4. If both your C3 and your C4 are low, that will score you a whopping 4. And then antibodies more specific for lupus, the likes of anti double standard DNA antibody, anti-Smith scores you 6. Remember guys, a composite score of 10 or more fulfills the diagnostic criteria for lupus. All right. The book of James chapter 2 verse 5 says, Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? We should never ever judge people based on what we see and what we hear, but rather we should rely on discretion that comes from the Holy Spirit before we reach a conclusion about any brother or sister. Remember that God has chosen the poor things, the weak things, to confound the wise. So let us always rely on the Holy Spirit. Here are my references, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, special acknowledgement to Dr. S. Siriram uh, for his slides. Uh, God bless you. I'll see you soon.